Hey, what's up everyone? Vegetarian Zombie here. I want to welcome you to my new series, HTML for Twine Developers. In this series, we're going to be exploring the HTML markup language specifically for using in your Twine games. Basically, when you're working with Twine, you're creating your stories, and when you output it, you're outputting it into an HTML document. In this case, it really behooves you to learn and understand HTML to see how it works and to see how you can actually apply it into your own games. By doing that, by learning HTML, you're going to be leveraging it and you'll be able to unlock a whole lot of features that originally were, uh, were originally available to you, but there was no way for you to access them without knowing HTML. By learning HTML, you are also opening up the door to other technologies such as CSS and JavaScript and these technologies will really add interactivity into your game and by adding all these things to your game it'll make your game really stand out. While you can directly type HTML into your Twine game for this for this series I'll be just using a text editor and I highly suggest you have one and follow along with me. And I'll also be using Chrome as my browser. I'll be dabbling back. I'll be jumping back into Twine every so often to show you how some of these, how some of these concepts can work inside of Twine. But the majority is going to be me writing in a text document and then viewing the results inside a modern browser. If you are following along, I highly suggest you download a modern browser such as Chrome or Firefox or so forth. Okay, let's begin. The first question you may have is, what is HTML? Well, HTML is the language of the web. It's what is used in all the web pages that we access on a daily basis. Even here, this page called the Twine Wiki, Wiki and this page is an interactive page, this is all written in HTML. To see HTML, I'm going to click View, Developer, and then I'm going to click on this View Source option here. And now I'm viewing this, this page, the Twinery page, I'm viewing its HTML source. And as you can see, there's a whole lot of gobbledygook. Hopefully by the end of this video tutorial series, you'll get an idea of what's actually going on here. And once you're able to crack open HTML, you'll be able to see that this, there's actually a lot of meaningful stuff going on here. This isn't just a random assortment of various characters and so forth. At its heart, HTML describes how a document is organized. And the way you can think of this is such as a letter. Here I have a business letter. And here you can see we have a lot of content being put into this. But this content is organized in a very structured way. Let's break this down and let's see how HTML would, would break it down. Here we have a header. And in this header, we have information about a certain company. Next, we have the date, and then we have the information of the addressee. After the header, we're going into the body of the letter, and we start off with a simple greeting. Following the greeting, we have individual paragraphs that contain certain content. After the paragraph, we now have our closing, where we have the name and the title of the person. We may even have a footer to this that could give additional information about this company. HTML would take this and break it, break down this content in such a way. You can even do some styling in HTML. For instance, you can bold this company name using some HTML tags, but HTML is really designed to show the structure of the data, much like how we structure a letter and HTML provides us a whole lot of tags to do that. To see this in action, let's create our own HTML page. I'm going to open up a text editor, and I already have it saved onto my desktop. It's called HTML for Twine Developers. And I'm going to create a very simple HTML document. Here we go. The first thing is we have something called a doc type. And every HTML document needs to have this. This is just telling the browser what kind of HTML document this is. Previous to HTML5, there was HTML4, XHTML, HTML3, and so forth. And each doc type would 
give a hint to the browser on how the browser should parse that HTML document. With HTML5 and going forward, we always use the same doc type. If you're interested in the specifics, then you can search the, the Wikipedia article on actual doc types. There's a whole lot in there, but you really don't need to worry about it. This HTML, you'll see next we have HTML. And you'll notice we have these this open greater than sign and less than sign here. Next you'll see we have this HTML text with a less than sign and closed with a greater than sign. This is what is known as a tag. And HTML is full of tags. This HTML tag is the start of the HTML document. And this right here with this forward slash this is the close of the HTML document. Whenever you create an opening tag, chances are that tag will require a closing tag. One thing about HTML is that it ignores white space, meaning I can put this document all on one line and this would still be valid. But for the sake of readability, we like to use we like to use carriage returns and tabs just to make the layout a little more easier to understand at a glance. So we have our HTML document. I'm going to create another tag in here, and this is called a head tag. Much like our header, in our letter, we have a header in our HTML document. Headers contain all information about the page itself that we're working on. This is where I may include some JavaScript that I'm loading. I may include CSS. I may include some meta references about the page so that when someone shares it on Twitter or on Facebook, those APIs will be populated with information about my page, such as a thumbnail, a title, and any images. Um, I mean, any content about this page itself. Users will typically won't see anything that is placed within the header tags. Once we have our header set up, we now have the body of our HTML document. And we just write body. And when, then when we're done, we close it like so. And this is the main content that goes on here. And we'll just print hello world. I'm going to save this. And now I'll open up Chrome. And I'll open this up and from my desktop. Here we see HTML for Twine developers. And this is a text file. Right now, it's actually parsing the text. I made a mistake when I saved it, so I'll have to change this. I'm going to close my text editor. And I'm going to save this as HTML. And now you can see we have Hello World. You may be interested to know what happens if we typed inside the actual header tag. Let's, I'll show you that in just a moment. I'll save here and I'll return back and you'll see our text is printed. Again, we only want to put assets that are about the page itself. In this case, this would be a bug and if you tried to validate it through a HTML validator, you'd probably get an error. As you can see, we have our opening tag and we have our closing tag. We can also give a title tag if we wanted to provide a title for the HTML document. And as I have an opening, I'm going to provide a closing. And here you can see this space for rent is printed right here. As I mentioned, you can bold text as well. There is such, for instance, a B tag, and that stands for bold. There's another tag called strong, which does the same thing. And now if I refresh, you can see hello is bolded and world is not. Typically, I would do this in CSS. 
but it's available to do in HTML as well. HTML tags also come with attributes and depending on the tag there will be a variety of different attributes and these can be really anything. For instance there is an attribute called class which you'll be learning about later in this series and you simply would type the attribute name then equals and then you would put your quotes like so. In this case I can just type main. What this class attribute is doing is it's assigning a CSS class to this body tag and then CSS will style this body tag. Later you'll be seeing exactly how this works but for now whenever you see this just know that this is an attribute. You'll see other ones such as ID which also has to do with CSS as well. A very common error when working with attributes is to forget the closing quote marks and then what happens is that all of this is included into the body tag then when you restart res then when you re reload your page it entirely disappears simply because you forgot to add a quote every so often you're going to want to provide HTML comments and these comments you don't necessarily want to show on the actual page but you want to leave a note. The way you leave a comment is you would put a less than sign followed by an exclamation mark and then you'd put a couple hyphens like so. And then you can write whatever comment you want. When you're done you just put your your hyphens and then your close your greater than sign and this becomes an HTML comment. When you reload the page, you'll see the comment is not being presented. But if you view the source, you can see the comment right here. All the tags I've shown you so far you can use in Twine. You can use the bold, you can use the body and head, although there's really no reason for you to do that. That may cause actually problems within your Twine game. But you can simply start using the bold tag if you want to use that. In the next episode, we're going to be covering the difference between inline content and block content. And this is critical when working with images and content that you need to lay out. And this is, a, this is an issue that you'll be encountering a lot when creating your Twine stories. If you have any other questions so far about what, what was covered in this tutorial, just uh, leave me a comment or send me a note via Twitter, uh, via Twitter and uh, I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks again for watching this series. I hope it's been helpful, and I will catch you in the next episode. See you then.